Thank you both for uh, this presentation. And hi to everybody. Yes, my name is Nate. I come from Slovenia, where a uh, beautiful country on the northern part of the Balkans that is actually, as Bo said, a hotspot for the uh, biodiversity in Europe. Uh, although I wanted to present uh, the evolutionary and phylogenetic aspects of trout and grayling, I deviated a little during the preparation of the presentation to capture the perhaps most problematic aspects now present in the, I won't say trout taxonomy, but uh, in the problematics that we are facing with the systematics. So the first part, uh, I come from the Balkan, trout River, uh, the Balkan Trout Restoration Group, which was founded by Lesh Snoy in the University of Ljubljana, where I hail from. And its basic research was actually uh, focused on the Salmonids of the Balkans, but later we deviated a little bit from there and the management of the Balkan Salmonids due to their diverse history and diverse um, morphology should be really well managed, uh, managed as was the basketball team in Yugoslavia when it took the championships. Well, a little icebreaker, let's say that you are here because you love trout or Salmonids and I think everybody loves trouts. Uh, this is a very similar um, slide that um, was already seen by Sarah, so we have a good example of convergent um, evolution happening here. This is my daughter doing some field sampling. And uh, trouts are important as salmonids due to their economical um, importance uh, and more or less due to their uh, fly fishing attraction that I will talk later in the presentation. So a lot of uh, research has been down, done in salmonids, um, mostly due to their economic, economical importance. They have been a uh, feeding stock for centuries. They have been uh, hatchery reared, managed uh, quite uh, intensely. And almost 900 publications per year are nowadays published uh, with the trout information, and no drop in the last few years have been observed. So immense research was put done into it. And immense research was also done by the uh, systematics of trouts and their taxonomy, mostly on mitochondrial DNA, sh shortly followed by the nuclear DNA. So one would say that everything should be already known and. Uh, all the knowledge obtained, so all the problems should be, should be solved. But that's not the case, as we will see throughout the talk. Well, how did the trout actually came to Europe? It is proposed that they came from the east, as all other uh, freshwater species. And that happened in the Miocene, uh, from 13 million years ago to 5 million years ago, when Europe looked something, well, something like that or something like that. So this is the Balkan Peninsula, the Italian Apenninian, the Iberian and the Atlas, and Anatolia that all, all these regions will be uh, presented in the talk a little bit more thoroughly. So the first, the oldest fossil of trout was actually found in Croatia, so the Balkan, and it is uh, calibrated to around to be old around five million years ago. So around five million years ago, trout were already present in the Europe. So the other fossil actually originated from the Caucasus and the, the third, uh, third uh, you, you must, uh, I apologize for my English, I'm a little rusty now due to the COVID, but uh, the oldest freshwater uh, habitat well, is actually Lake Ohrid in the uh, southern Balkan region that harbors 200 endemic species. And uh, the trouts there, Salmo Hridanos, are one of the first that split from the Salmo Truta complex. 
So it is supposed or proposed that these species uh, deviated from the Salmo Truta complex five million years ago. So actually, we know, we are quite sure with all the data uh, that the trouts in Europe are five million years old. However, due to the Pleistocenic or Quaternary uh, climate oscillations, all this had great effect on their distribution, on their phylogeny and evolution. And during this talk, I will try to talk a little bit about those aspects and how the species um, are delineated by them. Well, the Pleistocene glacial cycles um, were a little different in the southern uh, peninsulas than they were in the northern parts, uh, as you are used to. So, no resets of populations were present in the southern uh, refugia, although there were some um, glaciations uh, present even in dinarids that are here, and the atlas, here not shown, but the main glaciations were on the northern part of Europe and the Alps. So when the droughts um, dominated that space, they didn't go extinct. And they um, actually connected more than on than was uh, they, they they connected more in the south than they connected at the in the northern parts. Um, and many now unseen connections between the rivers have been present, let's say, in the Adriatic part when the ancient Po River was actually flowing all the way to the current Dalmatia, connecting eastern and western rivers of the Adriatic Sea. So connections were really more or less uh, constant. And with the pretense of mitochondrial DNA, evolutionary lineages were first uh, characterized. There are, I think, 11 uh, evolutionary lineages, and the three most important one are Atlant Adriatic that inhabits the Mediterranean uh, shores, the Danubian that inhabits the Danubian mm, basin from the Black Sea all the way to the eastern sides, to the Caspian one, the Atlantic lineage that is present also in Sweden, that is the one that uh, actually recolonized all the northern Europe. Now the offshoot of Adriatic um, evolutionary lineage is the Mediterranean, mostly present on the western parts of the Mediterranean, and the offshoot again of Adriatic, the Marmoratus lineage, and a few more or less uh, exotic lineages, such as Duero on the Iberian Peninsula, uh, the northern Atlas lineage, the Tigris and the day lineages of the eastern and western extremes of the areal or the species range. Um, and there were a few. Uh, so, this mitochondrial DNA gives us an overview of how the evolution of the trout started or how the divergence between populations uh, occurred. Well, it all started, as we said, five million years ago when the first split came, when uh, Ohri, Salmo Ohrid, uh, Salmo Ohridanus, the Ohrid, Ohrid, yeah, it's the hair, huh? Okay. <laughs> uh, when, when the Ohrid was first colonized, and then the lineages split about two and a half million years ago, when Salmo Bustuostris, the softmouth trout that we will talk a little bit later on, actually split from the Salmo Truta complex. Well, the mitochondrial DNA is really good for uh, showing us the evolutionary lineages because it fixates quite fast and shows reciprocal monophily. However, the relationships between these lineages are rather blurred. Um, 
but it gives us a nice overview how range shifts of the trout during the glacial cycles and subsequent colonizations affected the present populations. And it gives us a nice overview of this chaotic image that I don't want you even to try to understand. I just want this image to burn into your brain and show you how complex these uh, interglacial colonizations and subsequent extinctions and admixtures actually affected the southern parts of Europe for trout. That is something quite the opposite uh, for the northern parts of the uh, northern hemisphere. So each cycle, each glacial cycle, actually mixed the cards, shift, shuffled the cards so much that it is difficult now to observe and define where some or each species is uh, present. So the distribution of lineages indicates continuous retreats and probable extinctions. Okay. So to ease that image a little bit, I just outlined the hot spots of trout diversity. Those are the areas that during the glacial maximums probably did not affect them as much in a sense that trout populations extinct, went to extinction or um, died off. However, what happened is that they retreated during the glacial cycles. So when the glacial cycles were at the top, when the, uh, the climate was the coldest, trout were able to colonize the connecting uh, environments, the lowland rivers, while during the cooling of the atmosphere, ah, the, the warming of the atmosphere, they had to retreat with the glacial cycle, uh, with retreating mm, glaciers, and actually were able to bypass the orographic barriers as well due to the river capture um, events, and thus the orographic uh, barriers such as the Alps uh, or the Atlas Mountains, the, their valleys were not as uh, obstructive to colonization as was previously thought. And that was also proven on the, some other species such as scalping, now uh, on grayling as well. It shows that communication between um, Alps was quite possible, and uh, this is, has, has been shown that at least at the latest glacial maximum, the around uh, Ligurian Alps, Mediterranean lineage crossed into the Peninian Peninsula. So, all this actually contributed to the uh, immense diversity observed in these uh, peninsulas. And what has a reason due to that? Well, this is a map of all the valid species that we are now observing. So, in the past, as you know, there was one species, Salmo truta. But now, the splitting of the genus has begun, and we can see that most of the valid species now present are in the Balkan Peninsula, again, the Anatolia and Ponto Caspian region, and the Atlas. So only four or five um, species are actually present in the northern parts. And uh, mo a lot of those species are actually lacustrian types. So those, these are the 49 species of Salmo tr ex Salmo Truta complex that we can observe. And it was said some time ago that systematics of Salmonidae, Salmonidae is the shame of European ichthyology. Well, that was due to not um, describing the species as perhaps some people would want to, um, because due to the mechanics of the history of uh, trout, that was probably 
uh, from a genetic point of view, not possible. But why so many species? Again, there are trouts are plastic, a very uh, morphological plastic uh, species, and we observe morphologically as we do on mitochondrial DNA. So genetically, quite a few different um, distinct uh, populations. So we have here the enigmatic Salmo marmoratus from the Socha River that I will later talk a little bit more, the lacustrine Salmo carpio that is genetically actually a mixture of three different uh, evolutionary lineages. Uh, the Salmo fiberni, uh, so we have here um, Salmo busteostris, the soft mouth trout that we will talk later. So immense variability in um, morphological characters. And uh, I like this one. This is the uh, completely synthetic trout produced for uh, restocking that is actually a hybrid of many, uh, I think, three back crosses of pre, uh, X um, evolutionary lineages. So the immense plasticity of uh, phenotypes is actually probably causing this immense inflation of species. So what is the role of mitochondrial DNA? Well, it is a useful molecule, uh, but it has its problems. It is uniparentally uh, inherited. That means only the mother gives the information, this genetic information, to the offspring. And I'm, I'm sure you have heard of mitochondrial Eve, that is the uh, mitochondrial uh, mother of us all. Well, the fixation of mitochondrial DNA in population is actually quite fast. Four times the effective population size is actually, of generations, is actually enough to fixate the monophyletical reciprocal. So, meaning after four times uh, generations, the monophyly will be attained on that marker. So, actually, the monophyly is something that is probably uh, giving rise to the evolutionary lineages. Uh, while the nuclear DNA is showing us that, uh, six, th that time of fixation for monophyly is actually four times slower, thus giving us, if we use nuclear DNA markers, a little further resolution. Uh, so they should be always employed, but the mitochondrial DNA is good for lineage identification, refugia, uh, re revealers, colonization waves, and hit historical range shifts. What's the role of morphology? Well, the role of morphology is that we need field identification uh, and we need type specimen identification. However, it has many, many issues due to, especially in species or in taxa that is highly uh, morphologically or phenotypically plastic. Uh, you know that salmonids, actually, the rainbow trout was actually mm, regarded as a salmo like uh, 30 years ago. So it shows us how the morphology is actually uh, not as uh, precise in this taxa as uh, a few people would want to. So there are a lot of plesiomorphic characters. Uh, the marble trout that I mentioned before has a beautiful marble pattern that is also present in a few unrelated populations of Atlantic lineage, the Duero one and the Otra river. So populations that are completely not related to the uh, Adriatic living marble trout here. And the soft mouth snout of the soft mouth trout present in the Adriatic, well, it's actually present in many other uh, populations as well. So the characters are not well definable for this taxa. 
So identification of that, of that uh, is difficult. This does an, in, di not enabling us to distinguish species. Many characters are overlapping, and if we do the comparison of two populations, differentiation is possible, but if we want to show um, or, or create a, a dichotomy key, that is practically impossible. And throughout the history of uh, research, almost 400 species have been described so far. And of that 49 valid species, a lot of them have been quite recently described. So this graph is now really similar to the something we are observing in the last few years if we are uh, reading Financial Times. So we are actually experiencing an inflation of species, which is problematic in a sense, because species recognition, at least in Europe due to legislation, is important because of um, the protection status and the conservation it provides for the species. However, too much species will actually devaluate, uh, devalue the population so much that uh, having 50 species won't bring us no protection, actually. Mm. So the current taxonomy is largely based on certification of number of disconnected studies. So there was not a morphological or genetical overview of the whole range of the complex or the 50 species, but intersections were made and research because it is so much easier to describe the species that way. So for many of the species, validation is quite questionable. And uh, I actually didn't want to go into the species uh, problematics, but uh, I cannot omit that, that uh, for many, many species, we don't know where we are at the species continuum. So the species continuum is a concept where the population starts to diverge into two species that is called the speciation. Mm. We don't know, uh, and, and different spe species concepts, there are more than 20 of them, are actually intersections of how diverged two populations are to be called the species. So we are actually, for a lot of species, we're using this concept. Those are mostly lacustine, where just an ecomorph is actually regarded as a separate species, which, which is probably uh, in the concept of evolution totally wrong. And uh, only, in my opinion, only two species, uh, the biological ones, are present. This is the Salmo hridanos and the Salmo truta. However, for the sake of preserving biodiversity, having only one species is probably very counterproductive. Um, because of the immense translocations of Atlantic uh, trout, this would have a serious impact on preserving the local trout still present in uh, a few southern rivers. So what we are trying to do is to define how, how far on the species continuum is uh, or how low should we go to preserve enough species to have the best conservation possible. Um, so as Darwin said of, uh, a few years ago, uh, with species concepts and all the talk about species, we're actually trying to define the undefiable. If we look into the quaternary glaciations, the glaciations or the ecomorphs that were uh, talked before, well, all of those are probably um, offshoots of the that uh, were created in, in, after the last glaciation. So not a lot of um, evolution that 
is happening during the each interglacial actually persists, um, which is a problem. If we are uh, trying to protect that, on the other hand, we should be protecting it because sometimes the we should protect the biodiversity. Um, so one of the issues is the lacustrine salmonids. Well, it's not an issue, but uh, many of the species described are actually from the Pleistocenic lakes that don't diverge. They didn't. They don't show any uh, div divergence, nor genetic, only morphological, due to their uh, ecological adaptations. And there was a nice paper a few years ago showing that uh, trout from Seven Lake uh, evolved from the river in populations. Um, so the problem with morphology and mitochondrial DNA is one thing, but we should be applying the nuclear markers as well to the taxonomy to give us the rise of how evolution of each population has a reason. Mm. So we have the Adriatic Balkans. So this is the area here. We have a few rivers present um, that were during the interglacials connected via the ancient Po River, as you remember before. So these populations or, or populations residing in those rivers were actually connected from here all the way to the northern Adriatic. And living in these populations, ah, in these rivers, are actually many different phenotypes. We have a marble phenotype, uh, the Glavatica or Dentex phenotype, we have the riverine phenotype that would be uh, m m most uh, present throughout the range of Salmo Truta complex, and we have the soft mouth phenotype, which is distinguished due to its uh, quite interesting looking um, snout and its biology. It is actually, uh, in these rivers here, no graylings are present, so so soft mouth trout actually uh, in followed into the niche of grayling. They are spawning in the late spring when the waters are high, and therefore have actually evolved separately from all the other um, trout species here due to their uh, uh, reproductive isolation. However, even though these can be distinguished, uh, there have been some uh, hybridization observed, uh, even in this species that has separated from the complex two and a half million years ago. Mm. So if we look at the nuclear and mitochondrial DNA, we can see some discrepancies. Uh, as I have not mentioned, the nuclear DNA evolves four times, uh, many times slower, and it's fi fixated quite slow, uh, thus showing us a different resolution. Um, and if you look at the rivers present here, we can see that they inhabit many of the phenotypes present. Okay, the Socha River has only one, the marble phenotype, while the other rivers have many. Neretva River has Dentex present, marble trout present, the phenotype, the softmouth present, and the riverine type present. So when we checked the nuclear DNA, it showed us that southern uh, populations of marble trout are, are actually uh, con uh, related to the northern trouts. Um, so the question if those are ecomorphs uh, or actually a species was uh, finalized and uh, we, we know we are dealing with uh, Salmo marmoratus even on 
the southern rivers of the Adriatic system. However, the disc based on mitochondrial DNA, well, most of the southern populations actually had Adriatic lineage uh, fixed into them, meaning that resolving the relationships based on morphology or mitochondrial DNA is practically impossible. Thus, we should be focusing on using the nuclear DNA to, mm, to resolve some of the clusters that are actually present, thus enabling us to identify how many species we are dealing with. At least on the somewhat, uh, let's say, mediocre continuum of uh, species continuum. So, mm, the other aspect is the biogeography of Atlas trout, which is from the uh, northern parts of, I mean, the central parts of Morocco, uh, the high Atlas region, that actually it exhibits quite a few, um, quite a few genetic clusters. One of them is the the day trout from the Dra Basin, here is the Sahara, which actually uh, is quite diverse from all the other uh, species or, or uh, genetic clusters present in the Europe, um, and it inhabits the most eastern part of the areal. So we can see that there were uh, multiple colonization waves uh, that were detected based on uh, nuclear DNA. Uh, there are three signatures that indicate that the, uh, there are, in addition to the da Dra trout, also the ancient uh, Atlas trout present, as well as the new coloni colonizers of the um, Morocco. So how, in deciphering this, um, we can show how the colonization waves of Atlas region actually proceeded. So during the first or the early years of colonization, when the uh, trout actually came to Europe, um, one of the first colonization waves went all the way to the eastern part of its current species range, where it probably inhabited the Atlas. Mm. Also, uh, the it, 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 it seems that the environment enabled the colonization of uh, the Dee River, the Dra system, that was in the subsequent glaciations actually not possible. So no, uh, in any, any other subsequent uh, glaciation, uh, no new populations were able to colonize that area. And due to allopatric speciations, probably all the other, uh, the northern parts of the atlas were actually uh, diver diverging a little and were under the influence of new colonizations that came from the Atlantic part of the Europe. Uh, thus fixating, whoops, Thus fixating, again showing the discrepancy between nuclear uh, DNA and mitochondrial DNA. In the last glaciation, well, the mito uh, the okay during the last glaciation, the the fresh uh, Atlantic lineage actually colonized the Atlas, and uh, in. Incipated the mitochondrial DNA in quite a few populations that later colonized the uh, few uh, rivers of the Atlas. Where we can see that the northern parts, the, the Mediterranean short rivers, are actually very closely related to the Sus uh, populations. Thus, 
showing that the most recent colonization probably went all the way here, uh, almost to the DRA system by the Atlantic coast, while many of the populations still present in the atlas and not that don't, didn't went extinct during the last colonization actually pertained uh, and only one population actually had a recipe of uh, this fresh Atlantic uh, mitochondrial DNA. So with the advent of uh, new technologies, actually we are now able to obtain many uh, nuclear loci with uh, the help of uh, next generation sequencing. Uh, however, most of the data is uh, obtained with uh, reduced library representation uh, methods such as DDRAT sequencing. As uh, it was said before, the Salmonids had a duplicate genome. So what we want to do is to obtain the homologous sequences between uh, populations that we are studying. Uh, this enables us to obtain many hundred thousands of loci thus covering the whole uh, genome, but not actually sequencing the whole genome, which, is, which has uh, good value for um, obtaining the population characteristics that we want to delineate the species. Um, however, the phylogenomics has its, has its uh, computational uh, resources that are uh, very expensive and uh, to distinguish the phylogenomics of uh, one, clay, one clade that involves also uh, sea stars, actually, so much CO2 has been released due to comput computational requirements that would, in 10 years, that it would uh, enable one, almost 140 return flights from Paris to New York. So mm. we are having. Uh, a lot of data that we should work on, and this a lot of data actually provides us with uh, a few problems, since most of the evolutionary models are quite simple for us to uh, interpret them or to compute them. Uh, we are actually breaching those uh, models and thus uh, incorporating the stochaic uh, error. So we should be really careful when uh, providing the or interpreting the NGS data. Uh, so the possibility of, again, due to the genomic uh, data being quite uh, available, we are again under the influence of inflating the species once again. Mm. So it is really important to properly interpret uh, the data, which was actually done quite recently uh, by the same authors that inflated the uh, salmotaxon, and thus they um, actually uh, agreed now that broad range, um, they did a broad range sampling, and uh, so they actually resolve the few taxonomical questions uh, indicating that splitting a taxon just on morphological uh, characteristics was uh, not that optimal and that uh, due to allopatric speciations many errors have been made. So to avoid challenges in taxonomy and conservation of species complex like brown trout, it, they suggest uh, to describe the species based on genomic clades of popu uh, clusters of populations instead of describing species based on morphology and uh, the dif differentiation of a single type uh, of loci. So, with the core of uh, species val validity, we are uh, again coming into the conservation aspects um, where fishermen are actually the vanguard of protecting the, 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 
the the rivers, although they are exploiting the natural uh, native populations. Um, okay, so uh, if we look at the marble trout uh, restoration that was uh, that happened in uh, the Socha River. Uh, one of the successful uh, restorations was done because um, due to hybridization or, or translocation by the fishermen from the other uh, Danubian and Atlantic lineages for the sports fishing actually had a very negative effect of the natural population in Socha River that originally inhibit, inhabited uh, the marble trout. However, due to the uh, water, the, due to the biology that the marble trout uh, has that it is able to colonize the streams above the waterfalls, eight populations were actually uh, remained pure despite the high uh, stocking of uh, Allochtonos uh, evolutionary lineages. And these were actually the resource for uh, progeny to replenish the main river of Socha with pure, pure trouts. And now we again have the uh, marble trout swimming in uh, the Socha river. So almost no um, hybrids are present there now. Uh, however, the grayling that is also the native species uh, present there, the Adriatic grayling, does not have the biology it, uh, to pertain the uh, pure populations when this heavily managed. So, uh, as the trout, uh, the same as trout, the main uh, water, uh, water uh, was actually uh, stocked intensely with the Danubian uh, lineage of uh, so allochtonous lineage of the grayling, thus producing a hybrid swarm or the complete admixed, admixed population of uh, European and Adriatic grayling. In the last few years, the population declined so much that almost no spawners, or for the last two years, no spawners were uh, actually present there. So having this introgression actually took place throughout the whole uh, range, species range of the Adriatic grayling that is from the west, uh, from the eastern part, uh, from the Socha River to the western part of uh, where, the, where the Po River is actually formed. Um, so all the populations were uh, highly introgressed, um, but two populations were actually found to be pure, uh, to pertain the genetic uh, identity of what is called the Adriatic grayling, and thus with the decline, the decimation of population in the Socha enables us to restore the Adriatic grayling back to the Socha river with the help of those two populations, enabling us to actually expand the range of this highly uh, endangered species. Uh, so hopefully, uh, this is the next game plan for uh, the Adriatic grayling. Um, again, um, just closing remarks. So what we are do, what we are dealing with trouts is the immense, uh, immensely plastic taxon that was heavily influenced by uh, quaternary Pleistocene glaciations, thus enabling uh, allopatric speciation to inflate the species taxon um, description, uh, but with the onset of uh, novel uh, nuclear uh, uh, methods, I think uh, we will be able to deflate uh, this um, 
taxon to a few less species. Um, and we are doing this so th because of the management to protect uh, the species. So uh, thank you for uh, yeah, giving me the option. <laughs> Well, fantastic, you know, uh -huh. you, you really managed to get a lot into your presentation. I well, think too yeah. much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, actually, the time is consumed now, but this was the last presentation for the day. If someone needs to hurry to the bus or the metro or whatever, please feel free to, to go. But I think we will at least have time for a few questions, don't we, Mike? Yes, so if anyone has a question, please welcome. Yeah, that, sorry, of course. And this should be on now, yes. Yes, thank you for a very interesting talk about an interesting species. Uh, I just have a short question. I have visited the Prespa Lakes many times, and I was just curious if the trouts living in the Prespa Lakes in the Balkans are the same as the one in Lake Ochrid. Yeah. Uh I don't think so, yeah, they are, they are not. Or are they different? Yeah, there are uh, six species described in Lake Ohrid. So, oh. yeah, yeah, actually, the at least valid ones, but there is probably, um, there are probably now three uh, legit species, the Salmon Hridanos, the, uh, the Belvica, uh, the, yes, the Salmon Hridanos, uh, the Ohrid Lake trout, which is called the Belvica due to its silvery, uh, coloration, which Bela means white, um, and uh, a few uh, and two more others. One that was confirmed uh, with the genomic data, combining a few uh, species present there. Because uh, in 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 the previous um, before this genomic data, the each shoreline of the Ohrid Lake had its own uh, species. So. Uh, but without uh, a valid reason, just because they were actually spawning in the uh, different uh, rivers uh, or the uh, confluences of the Lake Ohrid. So this is quite similar if you would probably have more than 100 species here in uh, the Scandinavia if you would be following this uh, principle of... Uh okay, thank you. Well, according to some like me, there is Salmo peristericus, rather distinct species in one of the tributaries to the yeah. Prespa, but uh, yeah. we are okay. perhaps not of the same opinion regarding everything. So, <laughs> any more questions? Yes, we're up there. Varsågod, Michael. Yeah, thank you. It was a very, very beautiful presentation, and uh, I got very new, very, very much of, uh, new ideas and what you presented. That uh, I had to say, congratulate you. <laughs> it was a very splendid presentation. Well, thank you. Yeah. And some <laughs> things hard, and some make new that we all, everybody understand perhaps genetics in some way, a little bit more. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. <laughs> okay, do we have anyone else? Because if not, I suggest that we... Thank Jenae with an applause. Thank you.